Hi, I'll leave Varys here with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and everything in between. Today I'll be looking at the latest update to generative fill in Photoshop Beta. This new update promises to change the way we might approach image compositing. I'll, I'll examine the old school method of compositing with layers and layer masks and creating drop shadows, etc. And then I'll compare this to the new method made possible with the latest update. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, here in Photoshop, uh, I have this image that was captured by my wife uh, during uh, our latest adventure in, for Venice Carnival. And uh, I always thought this, uh, this image would be good if there was something unusual sitting next to her. She's leaving the space open on this couch, and so it's perfect to uh, to want to just play with placing something in there. So uh, first, I'm going to look at you know taking this this flower and and putting it next to her. And the way I would approach that is, well, first I would just select the subject, and uh, Photoshop usually does a really good job. Yep, and it's completely isolated the subject here. Always check uh, and use select and mask. So I'm going to uh, select and mask. I've got a nice contrasting color here uh, to show me the edges. It looks pretty good. Usually just to be certain that I get a nice smooth edge, I'll, I'll put a little edge detection on it, like three or four, maybe five pixels, and let it kind of round out the edges. It usually trims off uh, any little halos that might persist with a harder edge. So that's usually enough. We're going to output to a selection. I'll just say OK here. And now we're good to go. So I'm going to take my Move tool and we'll just drag it right into the image composite here. And yep, there it is. It's a little big, so we'll scale it down. Uh, kind of cool. Let's find a place for it, maybe. Maybe rotate it just a little bit. Yeah, and get that kind of in there. All right. Uh, now, in order to make this really look like it's sitting on the chair, I'm going to have to do something about the drop shadows. You know, where this, this is supposedly touching, I can see the angle of the light. So now I have to get these drop shadows to match uh, the direction of the light. And that's going to require, uh, I'll put another empty layer here in between. And uh, I'm going to paint a drop shadow. It's just black paint. We'll use a lower opacity. So right now I've got it at about 30. Um, that's good. Maybe we'll do like 20. All right. So I'm painting with black paint at a lower opacity so I can build it up. I'm going to try and match that drop shadow there just so it looks like it's actually touching the couch. And, and then off here, we got to get kind of a drop shadow going from that direction to match. And a drop shadow around the hand here, on the chair, on the wall. Uh, just going to have it make sense. The other thing that you want to do when you're making your drop shadows is have a contact shadow where, where, where it actually is touching. You want a darker, tighter shadow. Call that a contact shadow. And uh, that, that's pretty good. Let's take a look. Looks like, uh, looks like it's there. I might group these two layers into a layer group. So I'll make new group from layers, and we'll call that rows. So this way I can treat that, that rows in the drop shadow as, as something like one element. And I can now move the whole thing, including the drop shadow, so I can kind of do something like that. If I want it to go behind the armrest here, I can put an additional uh, layer mask here so I don't have to interact with the uh, with the drop shadow uh, layer mask. But I'm going to 
carve out where this uh, uh, armrest is. So I'm just going to paint with black on that area. And we'll zoom in just a little bit so we can see more carefully what's going on. Let's uh, change that opacity back to 100. And yeah, something like that. I should probably change my edge hardness, make it a little harder. And trim, sharpen that edge up a little bit. Right. So these are the kinds of things you have to end up doing when you're when you're sort of compositing old school manually. But the advantage is that I can get this to ha go exactly where I want it. And then I just sort of play around to see, uh, try and get a better drop shadow. So let's let's turn that off and let's examine another approach. Uh, this time we're going to use generative fill. So. Uh, I'm going to make a selection where I want that rose to go. And uh, you know, maybe I'll make it just a little bit bigger. I'm going to add to the selection by holding down the shift key. Okay, now I've got a nice spot for my rose. I hit generative fill. Now before, we would just type in a violet rose or a magenta rose or something like that. But now uh, this new feature is this reference image feature. And see, they give you this little animation showing you how to do it. So I'm gonna just click on this little icon here. And uh, that gives me this little dialogue where I get to choose the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here and I'm going to find my, my image. My dialogue is a little slow here. And uh, let's see what, I think this is it. There's my reference image of the rose. So I'm gonna open that. And now you'll see in the little thumbnail, it's showing me the reference image, but the reference image has a background in it. And there's this handy little checkbox here to remove the background. Cause I don't wanna add the background of the rose into this shot, I just want the rose. So we'll remove the background and there it shows you that the background has been removed and now I can close this and just click on generate. And it will give me three variations of this rose in place and let's see which one looks the best. Okay. Not not too bad. I've got a little drop shadow action happening right there. Yeah. I, don't know, I think I'd probably like this first one a little better. I'm still not happy with, you know, the drop shadow down here, but it's, it is doing a pretty decent job of placing that rose. Is it the same rose? Eh, not exactly, but it pretty much matches uh, the color which is important because I wanted this specific color because it, it fits in with the, the coloring of the costume here. Um, I can, I can move it. I, you know, I can just get the move tool and move this around, you know, maybe even rotate it a little bit. Um, I'm just not completely happy with the little, with that sense of the, the drop shadow that, that should be there. Um, Okay, let's let's try something really different. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use I'm gonna get this image to go in there. So this time we'll do it the opposite way. So this this is another Venice costumer that's sitting down. I've already removed the background, so this should be a slam dunk, right? So we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna select that play, make a place for her. Right, so I've got, she should be about the same size. Um, she's got this wide skirt and, and then the, the legs kind of come down here. I'm just sort of guessing where, uh, where this should be. And we'll do something like that. All right, again, generative fill. 
Uh, let's use our reference image. I'll choose that same image, which is right here. And we'll go ahead and open that up. It already has the background removed, so I don't need to click on this. And we'll just click Generate. <laughs> yeah, this is not something that Photoshop understands. Photoshop does not understand this image of the other um, costumer. So, you know, here I was hoping I'd save some work, but in fact, it's not working out that well. So I'm going to just throw this away and let's explore how this works uh, again uh, I've already got a nice mask of her. I'm just going to go ahead and drag the whole the whole uh, document over because it's got a layer mask with it, so I don't have to recreate a layer mask. I'm just going to go ahead and drag it into the composite. Yeah, it's too big, so we're going to have to resize it. Not a problem. Uh, let's just scale this down, and I can scale it to match. I can see that I have to make some allowances for that that arm, but that this is not bad. Let's let's try and get her feet to touch the ground. Okay, there we go. Well, we're we're already doing better than <laughs> our our generative fill, but we've got to uh, I've got to make another mask here. I've got to put a drop shadow in. Let's let's do our layer here. Uh, I'll get my brush for the drop shadow. Uh, I need really kind of more like a contact shadow and maybe some drop shadow action over here. So a little shortcut for doing the opacity. Um, if I hit the number keys, one would give me 10%. Two gives me 20%. Okay. Uh, well, I'll try going with 20% first and just want to get, let me make a nice soft edge drop shadow. So she's really close there. That's got to be, you know, when, when it's actually touching, you need to get kind of a real tight little extra, what I call contact shadow. And um, we we'll put that any place where she's actually touching the environment, you know, so a little tight little black shadow here. Um, maybe underneath the shoe a bit. Um, again, sort of a, a tighter, closer drop shadow here, but, but it it's also should be extending into the background here onto this hand quite a bit. If we looked at, and we saw, like for instance, uh, this shadow on the chair is really moving quite a, quite far across. So we want to sort of match that. And again, that means sort of tight little contact shadows in here. That little contact shadow does a lot to make it look like it's actually touching the surface of something. And then we've got this contact shadow there. So, it, you know, now, the only other thing I, I, I need to do is like carve out where this um, the arm of this couch is. Uh, so you can kind of see behind it, I'm going to change the opacity of this whole layer so I can see where that, um, that arm is. So I'm just going to drop this down. And so, yeah, now I can kind of see where the arm should be. So I'm going to place these two layers into a, a layer group new group from layers and we'll call this uh, costumer I'll add another layer mask to that and we'll just mask off I can see through where that that arm is and I'm just want to make this back to 100% um, mask that off Yeah, and maybe tighten this up because I have a soft edge layer mask or brush here. And let's 
tighten up that edge there just a little bit. Okay. And let's bring up the opacity of the customer. All righty, well, that's pretty successful. It takes a little bit more time and energy, but at the moment, especially when you have something that Photoshop does not understand, this is a bizarre image for Photoshop. If it was a regular person, it would be able to kind of re-render it prob probably better. In this case, you know, it's not really sure what it's looking at. So, uh, you know, when we, we've got, the rows of these other things in there, um, you know, it's, see that, that works well, but I couldn't get a decent generative fill version of that costumer. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully this has provided some inspiration for your own creative explorations. Uh, and if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.